The ocean is really amazing. When you dive in there, it's like entering a completely different world with a different flora and fauna. Like, have you ever seen this thing? It's a fucking fish with hands. And with my latest artwork, I wanted to transport the viewer into this world. So let's get right into this breakdown video. As always, the first step of creating a scene is blocking it out. For that, I used simple cubes and as a main object, I used the monkey head because I wasn't sure what the main object was going to be later. Also, one of the first things that I did was add a blue volume to represent the water. Now I had the block out of the scene and I could start adding some details. I decided on the ship from the stylus chip tutorial as a main object of the scene. But to make it look broken, I used a displaced cube and cut it out with the boolean. So as you can see here, I selected those cubes and remeshed them. Then I went over to the sculpting tab, where I mainly used the clay stripes brush to create those rocks. Of course I did that step for every rock and the big arch. Of course these rocks had a really high poly count, so I duplicated and remeshed them. Then I used the smart UV project to unwrap those low poly rocks. Now we get to the baking. So I imported the low poly model into Substance Painter and baked the details from the high poly model onto it. I already explained that process in the past videos, so I'm not gonna do it now. The texturing was pretty simple. So I just added layer after layer with grunge maps and generators onto the rock. Then I imported the second rock into Substance Painter. And of course, I could do the same process with texturing on the second rock, but there's a much simpler way. So in the file of the first rock, I just created a folder and put all of my layers into that folder. Then I could simply right click that folder and hit create smart material. Now I could simply drag and drop the exact same material onto all the other rocks of the scene. With that the texturing of the rocks was done and I could move on to my favorite step of the process. The creation of the plants. For the first plant I simply created like a grass blade and used the wave modifier to add the waves. In Substance Painter I created a gradient effect. And I used red and orange because I thought green would be too boring and I wanted to get like this otherworldly feeling. For all the other plants I used one simple trick, which is add a tree with the sapling tree gen add-on and add leaves. Then I converted it to a mesh and then simply cut off one branch of the tree. But so this works you have to make the trunk really really thin. In Substance Painter I basically did the same step as for the first plant, which is add a gradient and also add a grunge map to make it look a bit more interesting. Now back in my scene, I used the weight paint and the particle system to put those plants on the floor and on the rocks. On that big arch, I also added some hanging plants. And just to add some more detail on the floor, I added some small rocks laying around. Now I went on to the caustics, because before I just used a plane with a noise texture and let the light shine through it, which looked okay, but then I went on to YouTube and I found a way better way to create caustics. I link you the video of Polyfjord where I learned it in the description below. Now the scene was looking okay, but there was one key thing still missing, which is the story. I thought the scene would need a person, so I opened the free program Make Human. In that software you can create humans for free, which of course don't look perfect, but I knew that the person in my scene was gonna be pretty far away from the camera, so it was perfect for that. I posed that guy like he was dead, and I also made a few other characters floating around in the scene. Now let's quickly look at that scene and think what the story could be. So probably these guys were pirates and they were in a battle or something and they lost and the ship with the crew sunk to the ocean floor. I'd recommend you to always add story to your artworks because it can create a personal connection from the viewer and the artwork. Now I got to the final step of the process which was just adding details like debris from the ship floating around and I moved the rocks and also added some big ones in the background. To make the scene feel more alive, I added some fish, which I modeled after a picture I found on the internet. And then the scene was finally ready to render, and here it is. I hope you enjoyed this quick breakdown video, and I'd always be happy about some feedback in the comments.